All right, fellas, welcome back. It's hard to believe that it's already spring, technically. A little too soon to bust out the shorts, at least where I live, but nonetheless, we're gonna cover that in this video, talking about my favorite spring essentials. So with that said, let's do it. So first, let's start out with some shorts that I'm really excited to wear. My number one overall draft pick is definitely going to be this Seersucker short. Now, Seersucker just means it's a scrunched up fabric. Now, there's a couple things that make this really nice. One, it's more breathable, which is going to keep you cool, which we always appreciate during the spring and even summer. But more than that, just the texture that it adds to your outfit is really nice, very unique. And honestly, I always get compliments when I wear a Seersucker short. It's a little early in the season for these, so there's not too many places offering these. So I picked up these from Todd Schneider and I really, really like them, but they are pretty pricey. Another place that you can currently go to for these is Abercrombie. Now we're gonna need some good looking swim trunks as well. And you can also pick those up in Sear Sucker from Abercrombie. And these are by far the best swim trunks I think you can buy in the spring. They're not too expensive, especially if you wait for a sale, which to be quite honest, happens about every month or so. I love the five inch inseam, but I will say the waist does run really big on these. I'm a 31 inch waist. I went with the small and there's still plenty roomy. So be sure to size down. I just bought this really nice green olive color and I'm really excited to sport it all summer long. And they have a ton of different color options, which is always really helpful. Another short that I actually just mentioned in my previous video is the Lululemon Bowline 5 inch shorts. This is in their new versatile fabric, whatever that means. It's cotton and a polyester blend. It's very soft to the touch. And honestly, I think the look of it is just very flattering. What I love about this short is the unique pocket design, this nice little square detail that they added. Additionally, I really love the taper on this. It hugs the legs quite well, but there's also plenty of room if you got a big dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> I got this in the Mojave tan color, which is just a really classic understated look and then also black too. I do really love the Nomad, which is probably my favorite color in all of Lululemon. I've mentioned that so many times before, but have literally five other pieces in that color. So I try to shake it up this time around, but maybe I'll end up getting that soon. Anyway, what I love about these is they have a drawstring on the inside It is a pull on short. So they are extremely comfortable. And honestly, I do find that you can dress them up or down. So I showed off on TikTok that you can pair them with a linen top. If you want to go for more of a date night, well, shorts are a little bit harder to dress up. If you needed to, these can get it done. But they're also a great casual short too, and I think that's gonna be the main purpose for these. We're gonna keep the vibes rolling with shorts, and I'm gonna recommend a good pair of linen shorts. Linen has to be one of my favorite materials for warmer weather because again, it is very breathable, but also I just think it looks really good, and I like the texture of the fabric. So my favorite places to go for this are gonna be one quince. I think it's just the best bang for your buck that you can get. I really, really like these drawstring ones. I think if I recall off the top of my head, 40 bucks, but I'll correct myself on screen if I'm wrong about that. And of course, all reliable Abercrombie has some great options as well. Linen shorts are cool because you can obviously go for just a very basic plain color, but they also do typically have a lot of fun patterns that can really spice up some outfits. So those are a few of the shorts that I think are absolute must for this upcoming season. Now let's hop into some of the pants selection. And by the way, if you've enjoyed even a second of this video so far, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it and maybe subscribe too. I've recommended these on so, so many videos, but I will continue to because it's just an all time classic. You definitely need some good denim pants. So I'm gonna recommend the Abercrombie 90 straight jeans. You could always go with a light wash or a medium wash. I think either way you're gonna be looking good, but overall just the fit of these jeans is honestly perfect. They're not too loose and they're not too tight. It's just that perfect happy medium. But I will say if you have larger legs, then obviously go with an athletic fit. They're gonna look very similar, but have more room in the thigh area. Now I think Abercrombie's jeans are pretty solid quality. I will continue to recommend them because I love mine. But if you want something just a tier above, then I would go to Madewell and get the relaxed tapered jean. For me, these jeans are God tier. They are probably the best pair of jeans you can buy in my humble opinion. I think the fit on them is so flattering. And again, the quality, is really hard to miss on. So if you don't have a light or medium wash pair already, I would highly recommend getting some. And if you're really feeling crazy, maybe you can get a cream pair too. Here's a pair of pants that I definitely think is a little out there. It's not gonna be for everyone, but bear with me. If you're looking to expand your style a little bit, then I would recommend trying out a pair of police pants. Now I got these from River Island for about 75 bucks and they're a knockoff essentially of the Izzy Miyake version, but I do really like these and find them quite flattering. Similar to Sear Sucker, police is also a scrunchy fabric, if you will, but I really love the texture. Again, that it just brings to all of your outfits. What I love about these pleats pants is you can definitely elevate them. I think they're very well suited to do that. But again, you can also dress them down super easily with just a nice plain tee or really whatever else that you want to combo them with. Now this specific pair comes in a standard 32 inch length and I usually go for a 30 inch length. So I was fully prepared to take them into my local tailor and get them hemmed. But to my pleasant surprise, they actually sit quite high on the waist. I think just naturally that's the design that they want. So they fit pretty perfect. With this style of pant, you do want a slight crop. If you're any taller than six feet, I don't think these would work for you. And if you're much shorter than that, obviously, then you will need to get them hemmed. But 
I still think it's worthwhile for this type of pant. It's definitely a unique pick, and like I said, not gonna be for everybody, so I totally understand if this is not your vibe. But I do think it's good to get out of your comfort zone, and I'm telling you, you will get compliments on these. All right, now on the total opposite end of the spectrum, let's talk about something real, real comfortable, and that's gotta be some sweat shorts. I honestly can't get enough of sweat shorts. I literally have five pairs and made a whole TikTok video dedicated to this, so I'll link that below as well just for a good laugh. But nonetheless, I do think that these are really, really clutch to have, especially for those casual outings. My number one pick is definitely going to be the Lululemon Steady State. I think the taper on them is very flattering. The fabric and fleece on them is extremely soft to the touch. You will not find a softer fabric than this. And also there are zippers on all of the pockets, which for me is really important because I hate when stuff slides out of my pockets, especially wearing sweatpants. I feel like you can probably relate to that. It just seems to always happen. And they have you covered in any color option you want. Obviously Nomad, great pick. Light Heather Gray, they got you black as well, and some other great colors too. Now, if those are a little bit out of your price point, then I would also check out Abercrombie. Again, I really don't think you can miss, and I really like the six inch option that they have. And if you're feeling crazy, I really like this light camo color. It's definitely trendy, but at the same time, I just can't get enough of it, and I'm fully on board with this trend. Now, I teased it earlier on in the video, so let's mention just a couple of overshirts that I think are essentials for the spring. First up, I'm gonna recommend this double brushed jacket from Quince. This was only 50 bucks, which is a honestly complete steal for this, and it definitely feels high quality. It's thick enough that I have confidence that it's well made, but at the same time, it's not too heavy, so I'm gonna be sweating in the spring when it's pretty fair weather. I also like the crop on it. I think it sits perfectly just under the waist, and overall, I think it's a super versatile piece. Obviously, you could wear it on date night or dress it down a little bit for a casual outing to the bars or really whatever you wanna wear it for. I think it's just a good piece to have. I bought this in navy and they also have a camel color which might be even more versatile. Next is gonna be just a good denim jacket and my favorite is from Madewell. I went with a medium here, similar to the Quince jacket which I forgot to mention as well. And I love the fact that it has a straight hem across the bottom and not a dolphin hem or a drop cut which I do feel like I see a lot of shackets, especially in the denim material. Lately, I feel like that's more of a modern look and this is more of a classic style. Obviously, that's all preference, but certainly something that I really like. Denim jackets are perfect for the spring because they're not too thick and all you have to do is pair that with a simple white plain tee and your favorite pair of jeans or bottoms and you're gonna be looking great. Now, speaking of white tees, that's always an essential given any time of the season, but let me remind you of a few of my favorites. This is actually a new pickup and I can't believe it took me this long to buy it, but it's gonna be the Lululemon Fundamental Tee. I'm actually wearing it underneath right here it's insanely soft I also have it in a black color too but I can't recommend it enough definitely pricey but I'm telling you the fit on it and just the comfort overall to me is very much worth it so far I'm really happy with how it held up and obviously you can always go for a really cheap $10 shirt but I'm telling you you could just tell when a white tee is not high quality. And you might get a couple of great wears out of that cheaper tee, but over time, it's just really not gonna hold up. So I think paying up front for some more expensive white tees really is worth it. But if that's out of your price range, or maybe you just don't like the fit, I got a couple of other great options too. If you prefer more of that boxy and cropped look, one of my favorites currently is the Abercrombie Premium Tee. I've had this for a few months and I have nothing bad to say about it. It has a good weight to it, it's not overly thick, and it just really pops. It's like an extremely bright white. I also like the ribbed neckline, one for detail and also so you know it's reinforced so it's not gonna get bacon neck over time. And not to give you too many options, but I would also check the Madewell Everyday Tee if you're looking for just a good plain basic that's pretty much half the price of the Lululemon one, that's also a good option. Now because it's spring, I personally love busting out the white sneakers, so my favorite is gonna be the Axel Regato Clean 90s. I've had these for four or five months now, it's the second pair of Axles that I've owned and I want more. They're amazing. Again, these are a little pricey, but I'm telling you the quality on them has just blown me away and the comfort is exceptional. So I really do think it's worth it for these. Another staple is gonna be some Birkenstocks. It's pretty funny. I always see people on the East Coast bashing on Birks and then if you live on the West Coast, it's actually like a pretty casual thing. Almost everybody wears them. So I guess it really just depends on your culture and how you feel about them. But nonetheless, there's two I would recommend and that would be the Boston Birks, which are my current favorite right now and are definitely a bit trendy to be honest, but I still really like them. And then also the Air Arizona Birkenstocks, which are more of an open-toed style. Either way, depending on your preference, I think both would be great and, in my opinion, a staple for spring. Now, we also need some good trainers as well, so I'm gonna recommend a few, and that's gonna be the Axel Origato Dice A. They have these in green, beige, and blue. Or you could go with a more affordable option and go with the Nike Killshot 2s. They come in a ton of colorways, and I love the gum sole just to break up an outfit. Now, if you're like me and pretty much only wear neutral colors in your outfit, I would check out the Adidas Speciales. I'm real close to sending it on one of these, 
these. I'm just between the red and the blue version. And they also have a ton of other color options too. The specials are cool because it's just a little bit different than the Sambos, which some people feel is a little overplayed right now. I'm not gonna lie. I honestly still love them. I might get the red Sambas. I, I don't really care. I personally think they're comfortable. I really like how they look on feet. And yes, you're gonna see them everywhere, but at the same time, they're popular for a reason. Now, of course, we also need some jewelry. So I'll put some of my favorite recommendations down below. I think going for more dainty, I think is not a correct word, but I don't like bulky jewelry personally. I think if you have a thinner frame, then going with thinner jewelry is a good move. So for necklaces, I think a five millimeter is the way to go. And like I said, I'll put some of my favorites in the description as well as some watch options too. If you enjoyed even a second of this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also if you liked me a touch, maybe subscribe, I would really appreciate that. And it's a good indication that I'm doing something right. So anyway, that's all we have today. And as always, I will see you on next week's video. Peace.